Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's video, I'd like to show you how you can use the RGB Parade within Adobe Premiere Pro to get a correct white balance. It's pretty easy, so let's hop over here to the computer and get started. Okay everyone, here we are inside Adobe Premiere Pro. And like I said, I have two photos here that I want to show you. I have this one I took, I believe it was in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, I believe that was in Kuala Lumpur. I go there quite often. And I have another one here of Rose May holding the spider checker from Data Color. Now, these are photos, obviously, but photos or videos, the same uh, applies to both. So don't, doesn't mind if it's photo or video whatsoever. It's the same difference. So I don't want anybody to get confused over that thinking I'm showing you just how to do this on photos. It doesn't matter if it's photo or video. You do you correct uh, white balance and everything using RGB Parade the same way in both. And Premiere Pro doesn't care which one's which, to be quite honest with you. So the first photo here, you'd be thinking, this looks pretty good, Joe. What's wrong with this one? Well, the image itself is kind of cool. It's a little bit cooler than it really should be. And I want you to kind of look over here really good at the RGB here, the RGB parade, which is a three pillars here. First one being red, obviously, green, and blue. Now, I want you to pay really close attention to the the density uh, in each one of them. You see, it looks like, especially around here where the cursory is, red's most dense there, green's most dense there, blue's most dense right there. But the data also seems to come up. This is showing you where the data is within your image, where your reds fall in, uh, within your uh, you know, what you call it, scope and everything, from the high, uh, the brightest, the highlights here at the top to the darkest uh, shadows and stuff here in the bottom. And this is what's really going to matter because when you do the uh, you know, manually correcting with the RGB parade, it's the area between like the 50% up to like the 80% you're going to be most uh, focused in on. That's, that area in there is where most of your colors and stuff are going to be that are going to be the most noticeable. So that's where you kind of want to correct them for the most part. And let me get the white balance selected here. And I'm going to start you know, going down this chart here. And I'll let you, uh, let you see how you know Premiere Pro automatically adjusts it the white balance based upon you know from the highlights to the shadows so e2 is normally where you want uh data color says to, you know to use for a proper white balance we'll get that one in a minute i'm gonna start over here on d1 being the uh but no e one's the brightest i think i think it's like this no it's like this okay it's hard to tell in this photo <laughs> let's choose d1 and over here you see it kind of gets the colors pretty close over here and off the upper 80 percent upper 80 90 percent and kind of gets it correct a little bit not far it's just 19 on the temperature here and you know 2.7 on the tent here fairly close let's get this again let's go a bit further down let's go to the proper e2 here you can see it just a little bit put it uh pretty much darn accurate right here yeah that was uh, pretty much accurate here at 30.7 and 3.5. Around 31 to 4 is about uh, what I would think would be the most accurate. But so we go down the little you know, the shadows and stuff here. And you see it starts to even it out. And like we're here on E5, we now see that it's trying to make everything around this 30% mark to the 20% mark here. And this area, the spread the David, uh, the not David, the data out more evenly you know as far as the density goes and of course if i get the white balance selector and i click on the darkest here you see everything at the 20 percent mark is now everything in the shadows is properly white balanced but everything in the highlights now as you can see from the reds being peaked up too high here is really too reddish magenta -y looking and the white balance is really just completely screwed up so when we click this manually that you know kind of on the e2 here that sets about where most people want it around this like 60 to 70 percent mark here okay so what if we don't have a card to click on well let's uh, take a look here at the temperature here now when i slide it over to the the cool side here the blue side as you can see it smashed the reds all the way down didn't really touch doesn't really touch the greens at all and uh and it peaks up the blues really high and brings in more blue data. I slide that back the other direction here. 
the same thing happens. Green's really not messed with too much, but the reds the data is really pulled out while the blues have been crushed. So when you move this back and forth, that's really where it starts affecting everything. Okay. So what about the tent here? Well, when we pulled the uh, over to the green side of the tent, the reds and blues are crushed. Well, the greens are really pulled up. Yeah, we slide it to the magenta side here on the tent. As you can see, the reds and blues are pulled up while the greens are big crushed. And that's how temperature and tent works. Okay, so how do we get this one about where we want it? Like I said, we want to pay attention to everything between the 50% here at the lower end to around 80%. I would say, you know, around 80% at the top end here. This is where you want to focus the most. So what you want to do is you want to find the way to get the picture, the color the most even. So let me bring this over and see we're pulling up, stretching up a lot of the reds here because there isn't that much data in the reds right here around this area. It's very thin. If you look at the, the blues, there's even less of that, obviously. But also like the greens, there's quite a bit of green there. But we pull this out like 32. But when I pull this over just a little bit, that's actually looking really good to me as far as the 32, 12. And if we look over here, we pulled up a lot more of the reds because there ain't that much reds in this uh, little RGB uh, pillar here. And it kind of evens it out a little bit more. As you see, it pulled up the blues from here on the bottom here a little bit, crushed the reds down. But in the highlights, the reds are peaking up a little higher followed by the greens and blues and that kind of evens out the data a lot across the rgb parade here okay that was our first example and let's go over here to the second example here and like i said a picture of Kuala Lumpur. and we look here at the rgb you've got a lot of data in this you can see these a lot uh these little lines are a lot thicker on the image and stuff here and we can see we don't get that much reds in the shadows. It's mostly picked up in the midtones and the highlights. Followed by your greens and your blues being pushed down towards the, uh, the mids to the lows. I sound like a weather forecaster there for a second, mids and lows. <laughs> so anyway, back on the topic here. So how do we adjust this one? Well, we're going to use the same principle a while ago. We want to kind of even out the data. So first off, I want to pull this over to... It's kind of looking, well, uh, the way I want it. But we're crushing a lot of reds here. It's trying to get the uh, the highlights and the shadows, everything to look good. And I really don't like pulling everything over to 100% because it seems quite excessive here. So what happens when we start pulling everything back here with the tint? Back in this direction, or is it this direction? We Well, to find out, we have to kind of look at the RGB parade here. And see if I start pulling up about right here, around the 50% mark, everything starts evening out quite a bit. That means I could also pull this back just a little bit. Yeah, around right there to get the proper white balance. So yeah, the red and greens kind of peak out about the same, followed by the blues over here on the highest. But we're also crushing the reds down just a little bit still. But if you look at everything now, you got more of it evenness to it and kind of have to adjust it the way you want it yeah thinking about right there looks the best so we'll kind of zoom in here a little bit you can see this is about the best we can get everything to look i know their skins look pretty much natural but just you know i don't know who these folks are <laughs> but this is about the best you're going to get the skins to look on those because we got so much color cast from all the different lights and stuff in here. But the overall image, the, the white bound is, is corrected now. You can see we got, we got all that data kind of pressed and more evened out around, let's say, the 50% mark here, best we can. Now, to clarify here, in case anybody's wondering, we do got a lot of the blues kind of peaking up high over here. You see the blues hitting 255, but there isn't that much data in the blues. Whereas with the reds here, there's more of the reds going here, but that uh, doesn't go as high. It only goes to 90, but that data is more dense. So when you overall, this kind of evens out the white balance. So kind of hope that kind of explains everything the best here. So anyway, that's it on the learning how to use the RGB parade. Uh, now, 
like I said, I recommend everybody use a white card. I use one for all my videos and stuff. But if you don't have one, you can use this. Now, do keep in mind, a lot of folks, uh, wanna, this is kind of to get things more correct, technically. But when it comes to video and stuff, a lot of people use uh, you know, LUTs and stuff to get you a know, better look. So at least this hopefully helps you figure out how to get your skin tones to look the best, which is why I think matters the most in your videos and stuff. If you like this video, then you may also like a shampoo Backup Pro. Backup Pro can back up and restore individual files or entire operating systems safely and securely. Backup support auto updates and can either be stored locally, on network drives, or in the cloud. Learn more by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, everyone. Well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative, and I hope it helps you, you know, figure out how to do uh, get a correct white balance and everything within Adobe Premiere Pro, even if you don't have like a white card or anything. So, anyway, if you like this video, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs ups are always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, go ahead and take time to subscribe. Subscribing's free. It's for you. It lets you know when I release more videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.